Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of what was happening in England over this past week. I have been going back and forth a million times uh, whether I should do an England video now on Monday or whether I should wait for the midweek games. But then I recall there was a midweek game and to be honest I watched again Premier League as much as I watched Serie A which is the most that I've seen. Um, and there is, these are the two most interesting leagues at the moment. And in addition, I think we had quite some decisive uh, results, at least one very decisive result and then some follow-ups um, that make it worthwhile of doing this video. Wearing my Everton away jersey, Everton, and we will see that at the end, suddenly look out of trouble. Not quite through yet, but pretty much out of trouble at this very, very, very moment. Up top, also, I think... Manchester City, if they were down and out after um, having lost to Real Madrid, that draw uh, between Liverpool and Spurs gave them a huge shot in, in, in the arm. And now it seems all set for City and without a head-to-head -head for sure. There is a head-to-head -head in the top four race between Arsenal and Spurs. But also that draw paired with Arsenal winning against Leeds, very, very important result also seems to be that this draw was rather decisive in two races and not and not for in any of the teams that were going in there. Uh, this was one of those games where I said this is a must win for both teams. And of course it adds, adds in a draw. It's almost perfect game theory. Uh, neither one can afford to lose. A draw is horrible. So both need to go out and win and this equal forces pull and you get the worst result for them all. It's not the Pareto Principle because it's not a charity, this game that we love so much. And as I said, on the bottom, um, Everton almost out of trouble. Uh, almost. We're not done yet. Yeah, still a long way to go, but it looks good. But suddenly Burnley and especially Leeds are fully back in. So it, it is rather, rather remarkable what's happening over uh, this uh, past week. And I think it will be rather fascinating coming uh, the next two weeks as well. I would say we'll go through in, in uh, you know, I owe you the Monday result between United and Brentford. I think I didn't talk, talk about that, which was a three nil win. I think it was the last home game for uh, United as far as I can remember. So kind of a, a, a big result there for them. Uh, but, you know, uh, I will not spend much United. I have said every, everything I need to say about Rangnick in a specialized video. Um, they lost 4-0 to Brighton at the weekend. And uh, it is pretty much clear to everyone a major rebuild needs to happen. And I don't want to really say more because United at, the, at this moment are a non-factor in the league. And it's very, very boring to talk about them because everyone has an op opinion, so I don't need to uh, add to that. But I'd rather talk about the results, the three races that are really, really interesting in, in the Premier League, um, which are, of course, uh, the top four race, uh, championship race, and against relegation. A huge one was Aston Villa be, uh, going to Burnley and beating them uh, by three goals to nil. That was a rather rather decisive uh result um it was actually good that burnley pulled one back uh because you know you also have to take uh, in inter account goal dif 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 difference i did not expect this result at all to be frank but you know they did it and now burnley who had won three in a row suddenly are again a little bit uh in some trouble uh chelsea also may actually lose out on a top four spot which is uh, staggering i mean it's still 99 percent at this moment but it is not a foregone conclusion uh, especially with arsenal being straight behind them and you know if spurs do something uh who who knows what may happen and it looked also uh, it was not a great game Chelsea, by the way, uh, seemingly they have found a new ownership, which is good for them because this was definitely weighing on the club. Uh, and all the eggs are basically in the FA Cup basket if they want to salvage a season. Although, you know, you have already a Club World Cup to boot as well. Uh, Lukaku with a penalty that was first not given and then uh, taking um, uh, advantage of a rather poor build -up play makes it 2-0. Two goals. We had not heard this from Lukaku. Uh, at all this season so uh, pretty good stuff there uh, however late on it seemed like they are cruising 
lay down Wolves though, who had already missed a few good chances, um, make it 2-2. And uh, I think uh, the, the equalizer came late into stoppage time. Watford now down, uh, thanks to one loss to uh, Crystal Palace. And as I said, Liverpool Spurs for me, uh, definitely the game of the weekend. I said it before, no one could lose. And of course, it ends up in a draw. And it was so, uh, in a way, typically, that if I would have imagined that game, it would have played out exactly the way it played out. Spurs putting everything behind the ball. And although I think the opening 10, 10, 10 minutes, there were chances on both sides, both going full out in that sense. It was then Liverpool who were absolutely stifling Spurs. Spurs uh, deciding on a Simeone-like 5 uh, five five zero, um, really blocking shots, standing deep, uh, and really I uh, have a saying to Liverpool: come and beat us. And with for all the pressure they had, Liverpool and uh, attempt, but they never had really really clear chances. To be fair, the best one was I think a virtual Van Dijk header onto the crossbar. But the best chance in the half actually came from Heuberg, who uh, had a shot that was going uh, uh, towards the upright, which was exactly how this was kind of destined to go that Liverpool with all the attacking prowess will just uh, end up conceding and they did so early on in the second half brilliant counter-attack absolutely brilliant counter-attack especially uh, the way that Sessegnon then uh, cut back the ball I think it was a, a ball from Kane cut it back to uh, Son when he could have probably taken take a shot himself but he was aware enough uh, or was it Kulusevski who actually played it out? One of the, 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 those two. A, an absolute brilliant goal. I have to say, the way this was made, dang, 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 and into the net. Wonderful. Uh, they almost then doubled that lead, but again, Liverpool dug deep, got more chances, had way more of that game. But Spurs defending big, but it was then, of, of, of course, a Luis Diaz. Uh, Shot that had to be deflected, uh, that went in the internet in the 74th minute to make it 1 1. But I have to say, up until that point, it, despite all the pressure that Liverpool had, and as a neutral observer, of course, you say that Liverpool fully deserved this equalizer. I agree, so too. However, I could very well see that this is a game where Spurs just runs another count, counter and wins that game. Liverpool only had after the goal one really good chance by Salah, despite all the all, all pressure. It was always half chances, half shots, and, and so on. And again, if Heuberg had a little bit more presence of mind, and uh, even if he lets the head, had a go in the nine, nice um, and not had it back, but had it straight over to Kane, Spurs are gonna win this game 2 1. But so it ends 1 1 in a game. The club said, yeah, it's not his style of playing, it's legitimate, but it's not his style of playing. He, he, he just doesn't understand it. And in a way, I don't understand it either. But I think uh, given the strengths and weaknesses that Spurs have, I think this was the valid tactic. Because Liverpool, with all the power that they have, you need to block them low. And they did this to rather a uh, great effect. And I think uh, Conte definitely will feel a little bit aggrieved that despite all the power that came from... Um, that came from... Uh, uh, Liverpool, they could have won that one. But yeah, this draw serves no one. This draw absolutely serves no one except Manchester City and Arsenal. Arsenal, of course, made sure uh, that they win against Leeds. Um, it was a clear-cut game most of the time. A horrible mistake to make it 1-0. Uh, one, one a stupid red cut by Ailing. That this wasn't a straight red and needed VAR is a little bit of an outrage. Uh, and so it kind of um, this integrated train, tra tra training match uh, when Leeds pulled one back and almost could have gotten an equal, which was uh, been way more than expected. And so um, the expected result came. Arsenal now four points clear of Tottenham, as we will see. And that seems also kind of decisive in the race for the Champions League. Um, Everton. Big win at Leicester City, although they made it much hard, harder work than probably needed. Um, especially in the first half, I really thought that Everton should, 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 should have scored. I mean, uh, Mik Mikkelen gives them with a great shot, a 1 0. And then uh, I think in the 10th minute, Everton almost scores on one side, but it was a little bit slapstick how this didn't get in. And then 
they make themselves a slapstick defending uh, display that Patsantaka uses to make it 1-1. They get through Holgate, the lead in the 30th, but then had to hang on. Leicester clearly, uh, it's kind of a throwaway season for them, but a really, really big win for Everton. As, 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 as I said, uh, this lifts them out of the relegation zone, which they had been occupying for two weeks or so now, and in a good position to actually finish out the season uh, on a possible you note. Know, West Ham, also pretty clear winners over Norwich uh, after being ousted from the Europa League. And then if anyone thought that City are now uh, in trouble, after the loss to Real Madrid. No, that result on Saturday evening was the motivation that they needed. And now they not only went out to destroy Newcastle and get the win, but also boost their goal difference where there was a huge swing over the past few few weeks because Liverpool had the superior goal difference for most of the time, but now it is definitely in cities. Raheem Sterling early on, I mean, Newcastle had a chance through Wood. They had an equalizing goal that was rightly taken off for offside. As soon as Laporte makes it 2-0, there was only one win and then it was only how big it was and what brilliant goals then came. Uh, I think from a De Bruyne corner, corner Rodri steals himself away, head, heads it in. The last two goals were just typically City uh, goals through Phil Foden, you know, Grealish, Sinjenko and Foden and then Grealish also sees Sterling to get a second goal of the evening. It all looks City's way. So uh, if we look now at the standings, um, it tells a pretty clear sign. Suddenly it's 85% City because Liverpool dropped the points. They have also the goal diff the, the, the difference. Three games to go. Uh, it basically means that City need to draw twice or need because even uh, a loss, they need to drop points twice for realistic for Liverpool to get back in into title. Not very likely, especially with the heavy program that Liverpool have coming up. Chelsea, 99% in the championship, but you see 67 points, Arsenal 66. Uh, should Spurs a win against Arsenal and Chelsea not um, pick a point? It could get tied again, but I still think a Chelsea will finish in the top four for sure. Uh, Arsenal, 77% uh, chance. So this also seems rather, rather good for them. And let's look at the bottom. Everton, only 7%. Palace, surprisingly, still safe, although... To be honest, I mean, they are still not quite out of it, just mathematically, because, you know, uh, they have many games to make up, and that's the reason why they are not really considered uh, to be in relegation threatened. But uh, a good season for Crystal Palace, if they keep on losing, could end up quite a kind of ugly. But at the moment, as it stands, it's between Burnley and Leeds United, who will go down and basically take your pick there. Um, upcoming games. It's a little bit of a mess. We have a, with tons of midweek games uh, to talk about. Uh, we have on Tuesday Aston Villa Liverpool, Gerard against uh, his former team. Of course, we have Leeds United against Chelsea. This is all in preparation for the FA Cup final that is coming on, on Saturday. Uh, Wolves against City also there. Everton not playing against Crystal Palace uh, quite yet. Uh, we also have Everton play then against Watford and uh, Leicester against Norwich. This is all on Wednesday, so we have only the Liverpool game on Tuesday. And then the big one with Spurs against Arsenal on Thursday come coming up. As I said on the weekend, we have, um, of course, uh, matches uh, that kind of for around 37. Uh, another kind of big game between uh, Spurs and Burnley uh, will very much hinge on what was happening in that Arsenal game. I think Spurs, uh, it's a Sunday game, but you know, Spurs having to play on third Thursdays and then getting an early game doesn't look uh, quite good. Leeds have to do something against Brighton uh, for sure. Um, Everton against Brentford, not an easy game either. Southampton, Liverpool uh, will be played on a Tuesday, so it kind of stretches out a little bit because you have to fit the fixtures in. We also have to look at West Ham against City. There is some that could potentially be one uh, game to trip City up. I don't think that Wolves will be that one. So, you know, maybe, but I think the title race is more or less decided. But we have one title for sure, and that will be the FA Cup final on Saturday, Liverpool against Chelsea. Should be a fun match, but let's see about that. Any case, let me know how you think about all these um, games that are come, coming up and that are happening. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, 
Here are some videos and playlists that you might actually enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click the little bell. So in order to get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe.